bread man. Huh, I wonder how my last scripted video is doing. Spoilers for the Scream franchise. Duh. Scream has a long lineage of killers. Nine in the main movies, four in the TV shows, and one in Dead by Daylight. Though that one is a fun world property and not related to the Scream franchise. So you may be asking, what makes Mickey Altieri, the lapdog of Scream 2, this goober, the gold standard, the A+, the blue ribbon, the other synonyms for a great ghost face? Well, let's just get right into it and find out why. First, to understand why Mickey is great, we need to discuss what makes a great ghost face. I've narrowed it down to a couple categories. Kills. Are they a heavy hitter, or are they on the tamer side? Motive. Is it unique, or as simple as simpin? Impact. Not on the series, but on those affected. Jill's gonna mess with Sydney way more than someone she just met, like Richie or Charlie. And finally, spectacle. Are they fun to watch? So let's look at why Mickey is amazing in all of these categories. Let's start with the slashing. Mickey does most of the heavy lifting for kills in Scream 2. Of the 10 kills, Mickey is responsible for 7 of them. 2 of the other 3 are himself and the other ghost phase. The kills he has are pretty solid. Stabbing through a bathroom door, in front of a crowd of people, defenestration, a double kill from a car crash, a standard slashing, and a shot through the heart. Mickey is also one of only three movie ghost faces to get a kill before their movies, with Billy and Stu killing Maureen Prescott, and Mickey having at killed at least three people before Scream 2 to be considered a serial killer. He also has the second most confirmed kills being beat by Roman, and the third most if you include speculated kills with him being beaten by Charlie. Let's get into the motive. Mickey is probably one of the most unique motives, but let's just look at all the other motives to be sure. First is the most common, revenge. Billy wanted his family together, Mrs. Loomis wanted her son back, and Roman wanted to be loved. The second most common is a tie between wanting more stab movies with Amber and Richie and lust with Charlie and Stu. Then the final two ghost faces have very similar but also different motives. Fame. There's one key difference. Billy was a sick fuck just like you. Bill is a, is a sick fuck who tried to get away with it. Mickey is a sick fuck who wants to get caught. Yeah! Mickey's goal for fame by blaming his killings on the movies is a wild-ass motive, but they've never made one as good since. Next up is impact on Sydney, or the main character, but in this case, it's Sydney. While all ghost faces mess with Sydney, people like Charlie and Richie aren't going to have the same impact as Billy or Jill, where Billy messed with her heart, Mickey screwed with her mind. Billy made her question all of her boyfriends. Mickey made her question all of her friendships. She put herself into hiding because of Mickey, as shown here. If you think about it, this whole thing that Mickey does to her is what drives her into isolation in screen three. Oh, yeah. Is that he completely fucks with her brain and victimizes her. He messes with her head and totally victimizes her. He got into her friend group, got her trust, and got her convinced that her boyfriend was a murderer. Billy stabbed her in the heart, and Mickey spun her head. Finally, let's get into the spectacle. I ain't gonna beat around the bush. Timothy Oliphant's performance absolutely slaps once the mask comes off. But before that, he just doesn't have that long to shine. That is his main flaw that I will talk about later. Besides that, let's talk about the 6 minutes and 17 seconds of screen time, and more specifically, the 3 minutes and 21 seconds that he's ghost face. He spends 40 seconds of it convincing Sydney and most of the audience that Derek is the second killer. He also has the best line in Scream 2. You should really deal with your trust issues, Sid. I mean, poor Derek. He's completely innocent. He's such a nice boy, too. He's bright and funny and handsome, decent singing voice, and he was gonna be a doctor. This was just the kind of boy you'd like to take home to mom, if you had a mom. He hams up almost every moment he has as Ghostface. And he hands it up perfectly. I'm not sure if it's the script is tight or that Timothy Oliphant's an amazing actor, so I'm just gonna call it both. His death is also the best in, of the ghost face in the entire series. He gets pumped with so much lead. Actually, maybe second. Third? But with all that is great, there's also one huge fault. He is just not in the movie, 
in the almost two hours of movie, he's in it for about six minutes. He is in about 5% of the entire movie. But I'll say it's quality over quantity. The film class, the frat house, the entire finale. All of these sound way better if I ignore the cafeteria scene. Okay, the cafeteria scene isn't that bad, but it's still not great. But if his worst is not great, I'm gonna call that okay. You may say, how can he be the gold standard if he still has that flaw? Well, one mistake doesn't ruin a character. Stu may be as interesting as his white bread in the script, but Matthew Lillard carries the role. Jill may be totally out of left field, but it still makes sense. Charlie may be... Actually, I can't defend this one. Mickey may not be the best close face, but he is the gold standard. He's what you want and have to achieve for a good ghost face. He ain't the pinnacle, but he's pretty freaking close. If only we could see him again. Mickey prequel baby! Bread man.